Namaste everybody, good morning. Thank you so much for joining today. So as always, this is, okay, I'll try that again. I'm not sure um, when it started recording, but Namaste, thank you so much for joining this morning. As always, please practice in according, uh, accordance to your condition and your uh, ability level and level of comfort. Please respect your limitations and if you know the variations and you know the practice well, I invite you to do them. If not, please modify as you need to. And uh, just remember this practice is an offering, so whatever you feel is being is to an effect affecting everybody. So try to feel good when you practice and try not to bring yourself into a place of pain or suffering, anxiety or distress. So let's begin. Let's start by sitting tall and straight. Close the eyes and bring your attention inward. Nothing to do, nothing to seek. Everything we need is already within. Let's begin with the sound of all three times to attract divine attention. Imagine becoming one with all beings everywhere. your mind on God alone. Rest your thoughts in God alone.
So let's do them a few minutes of alternate nostril breathing, the main breathing. It's a very beneficial breathing that brings calmness to the mind, balances out the energies, and um, helps you to prepare for meditation. So pranayama is said to be the gateway from the outer yoga to the inner inward yoga. When you have control of the vital force, it allows you to control the mind. Once you have control of the mind, it allows you to be more effective in your meditation, which is uninterrupted concentration. So for this technique, we'll use a rhythm of three, 12, six, three on the in-breath, 12 on the breath retention, and six on the exhale. We're breathing in through the active side, hold the breath for a couple, uh, for, um, hold the breath for the 12 counts, and during the breath retention, we're contracting the root muscles, pulling them up towards the navel for the root lock, for the throat lock, through the inhale. Make sure that your chest is lifted so that when you hold the breath, you can bring your chin right down in your chest without bending your, without hunching your back. The attention's at the space between your eyebrows to see to divine perception. Exhale out through the less active side. Inhale through the less active side. Hold the breath again. Apply the throat to the root lock. Exhale out through the active side again. So um, begin and end on the active side. For the active side, so we're going to find it first. So it's um, the side that feels more open when you breathe in and out. So first of all, the left hand always stays in the Anna Mudra, second finger and thumb connected, other three fingers extended on the left knee. Right hand is always used to control the passage through the nose. Um, left, second finger, then the third finger fold down towards the palm. This is Vishnu Mudra. Turn the palm towards you and it's no longer Vishnu Mudra. It's a mudra that we use for the pranayama. So the thumb for the right nostril and the right ring finger for the left nostril, always those, just those two fingers. So let's block off the right side first, the right thumb, inhale, through the left. And then close off the left side with the right ring finger, in and out through the other nostril. Whichever one feels more open is your active side. If they both feel the same, then the default to your left side is your active side. So my active side was the left side. I'll demonstrate with the left side. Sitting up tall and straight, the back very tall, shoulders over the hips. Left hand again in Yana Mudra. Breathe out, empty the lungs. Then close off the right side. Inhale through the left. Two, three, hold the breath. Chin on the chest, third eye attention. Contract the root muscles, pull them up towards the navel. Three. Four, attention at the third eye, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Exhale out through the last active side to release the locks and the throat and root. And try to be completely empty by the eight, by the sixth count. Five, six. Inhale again, fill up through the three counts. Three, make the chest as high as possible, hold the breath, third eye attention again. Everything stops, all the attention of the space in the eyebrows. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Exhale out through the active side. Two, three, four, five, six. Inhale again through the active side. Raise the chest, remember, hold the breath, chin on the chest, contract the root muscles again, pull them up towards the navel. All the attention to space in the eyebrows. Bring the tongue to the roof of the mouth behind the teeth. Nine, 10, 11, 12. Exhale out through the less active side. Two, gradually, three, four. Completely empty five by the five, count, six, count six. Inhale again. Hold the breath. out through the active side two three don't let the breath explode out of the body gradual exhale five six inhale through the active side three hold again third eye focus everything stops all the mind fluctuations the body movements and the emotions as though they're frozen Out through the last active side, two, 
three, four. Control the breath. Six. Inhale. Two, three. Hold the breath. Both sides of the nose closed. Five, ten, eleven, twelve. Exhale out through the active side. Two, three, four, five, six. Keep the back straight, remember. Inhale. Three. Hold the breath. Make sure your neck doesn't, your back doesn't round, your upper back doesn't round when you're doing the breath retention. Keep your back very straight just the chin comes onto the chest. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Exhale out through the less active side. Six. Inhale through the less active side. Three. Hold the breath. Keep the fingers close to the nose. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Exit out through the active side. Three. Four. Five. Six. Continue with a few rounds of your own. Pretend you're the witness watching the body moving all by itself, doing the exercises with diligence, with attention. Look enthusiastic or, and feel enthusiastic, enthusiasm when you do the practice. Imagine the Supreme Witness, which is God, who resides within, is watching all. So if God senses that you're obedient and you're enthusiastic, God will want to share all the knowledge with you. Be like the ideal student. Every life form that we copy as we move through the practice, imagine them as your teacher. Copy them in all levels, physically, mentally, and emotionally. And you become one with the form and you find the ease in the form, in that being. Put yourself in their shoes, in their mindset. time you breathe out of your active side conclude take your time don't rush complete the cycle with all the counts three twelve six Once you're done, both hands in Yana Mudra on the knees. Sit tall again, make sure you don't slump down into your hips. Pull yourself up. Be supreme. Meditate upon compassion, but first and foremost, exercising that and through compassion all the other ethical precepts um, extend or stem from that we can't exercise the other ethical precepts without having compassion at the forefront meditate upon compassion every day in order to cultivate it to a higher extent so that you feel compassion and divine love toward and unconditional love towards all beings. Now put that into practice now. Let's begin the practice.
making an expression of divine love towards all beings. Pretend it's your divine duty. Come to standing. So let's start off with spiritual beating. Stand your feet about 10 inches apart. Bring your arms above the head, palms slightly turned upwards. From the fingertips, inhale down through the arms and right into the spiritual heart, located in the center of the chest and the right side of the physical heart. Pull in the best of the best that you, from the universe. Then hold it all in the heart, hold the breath. Exhale out through the arms and just the breath out, everything that you pulled in stays in. Inhale again, feel as though you're a magnet attracting everything that you need. Right into the spiritual heart. Then hold in the spiritual heart as an offering for God and for all beings, for God is within all beings. Exhale out through the arms again. Send just the waste air out. And last time, inhale. Bring in everything that you need from the universe, the best of the best. Send it right and hold in the spiritual heart, hold the breath at the same time. Exhale out through the arms. Send out again, just the breath, everything that you pulled in stays within. Bring your arms down. Let's continue with the exercise to prepare the body for the practice. Again, pretend you're the witness watching body move all by itself. So to swim from one side to the other. Feel like the arms are heavy ropes, just hitting the body. Roll them around the body. Slow it down, coming back. Place the hands on the hips, circle the head, making large circles as possible. Feel as though the head were very heavy, not even able to stay on the top of the neck. It just rolls from one side to the other, front and back. And then switch the direction of rotation. Try to see the floor in all directions as you take the head around and around. Loosen up the neck. And now the right arm swings forward four times. And then backwards four times. If you need to, you can take your left hand to the front of the shoulder if you have any shoulder uh, issues. And switch again four times. Feels like you're about to throw a ball. And then the other arm. And then backwards. It's as though you're holding a weight in your hand of five pounds, and this allows you to swing the arm more easily and then back. And then come back to the front, take hold of the opposite elbows, squeeze the ears by, uh, with your arms and bend to your left. Go to the right, push the hips out towards the left. Come to the left again, try not to make folds in the waist on the left side of the body and go to the other side. Then come back to the center, make little circles, tracing them over top of the head. Elbows, neck, and shoulders mostly just moving. Make the circles a little bit bigger now. The chest and the upper back come into the movement. And then maybe tracing large circles in front of the body. Use the momentum of the downswing to bring you through the circle swiftly and smoothly. Come right back up and then uh, change directions, starting off small again, tracing little circles over top of the head. And then adding the chest and the upper back into the movement. And now if you feel comfortable, the whole torso swings down, trace large circles in front of the body. Coming right back up. Release the arms, shake out the wrists, move the fingers very, very rapidly. Again, no control over the hands, they're moving all by themselves. 
coming up and down. Flap them like the wings of a hummingbird so fast you can't even see them move like a blur. Next one, lion's breath. Make like you're pouncing the lot like a lion. Open up the wide, eyes wide and allow the tongue to hang out of the mouth. So do this to release some tension. Exhale. So yeah. exhale as you come down into squat. Here, humility pose. Bring your feet closer together, arms by sides, body head down again, and gesture of humility. Six counts to come up, halfway up, we turn the palms up, we lift the heels. Inhale, two, three, lift up the heels, lift the palms. Two, three, exhale, two, three, and down, two, three, head down. Inhale, start to lift up again the arms and rise up taller up off your heels three exhale two three and down engage the core engage the thighs inhale feel the arms floating up all by themselves and start to rise up taller two three exhale two three Put your heels down, push you to reach your toes. Arms come down gently. One more time, inhale, two, three. If you lose your balance, just try again. Just keep trying. Two, three, exhale, two, three, and down, two, three. Bring the chin back down onto the chest. Stay in that mindset of offering of humbleness throughout the practice. Ex let go of all expectations, all attachments to the results. Do the practice because it must be done. So now let's come to the front of the mat. Now, as a heart, Surya Namaskara. Imagine the light and the warmth streaming down you from the sun above. The sun represents the light and the warmth, uh, the, the wisdom and the light and the warmth of the sun represent the wisdom and the love of God. Infuse yourself with that and send it out to all beings. Raise your arms up over the head, reach up and back, hips forward. Stretch the front of the body. Then come forward and down. Bend your knees if you need to, bring your hands flat on the ground, your belly on your thighs. Right foot back, roll the knee down, sit down to the seat. Push the seat in. Come into high plank. Bend the knees down, the seat all the way back behind the heels. Glide forward, tug at the floor with your arms, and slide between your arms. Lift the chest, bring the head back. Bring the seat all the way back behind the heels. Once again, glide forward. Brush the nose to ground, raise the head, chest wide, shoulders back. Make sure you don't jam up the back of the neck. Come all the way back, and come forward again. Telescope the neck out of the shoulders, the trunk out of the hips. Rise up tall, push the chest forward, away from the seat. Roll over your toes, back into downward facing dog with the seat. Allow the heart to drop down, the head to lower down below the arms. Then look to the hands, right foot forward. If the foot doesn't make it away, if it's difficult, lower the back knee down first. You can use your right hand to then assist the foot forward if you need to, us also. Sink the seat all the way forward, towards the front heel. Left foot comes in to meet the right, chest on the thighs, head down. Right and standing, reach up high over the head. Bring the hands back to the heart. Raise your arms up again, stretch the whole front of the body. Create space to approach your true nature, which is boundless in its potential, limitless. Left foot back, sit down to the seat. Come into high plank. Down we go, knees, the seat, and the knees down and the seat all the way back. Glide forward between the arms. Allow the head to go back over your seat. Bring the seat all the way back again. Keep moving according to your condition. And don't worry about the breath. Just move the body in a way that feels comfortable and natural. If you move the body, the breath will follow and deliver ease and steadiness of movement and fluidity in movement. Right into the cobra again. Roll over your toes back into Adho Mukha Allow the heart to melt again. 
Then the left foot steps forward to the hands. Sit down to the seat. Bring the feet back together. Uttanasana. Bow to the legs. Head down. Come right to standing. Reach up. Arch the back. Come back home. Hands to the heart. And again. Raise your arms up. Go down. Right foot back. Sit down to the seat. Come into high plank. Keep on to near the witness. Knees, chest, forehead down. Watch the body moving gracefully in your mind, in your imagination. And then, perhaps this will translate into your physical movements. Right foot forward. Just try to realize the poses just as you see them in your imagination. Bring the feet together, chest on the thighs, head down. Come right up, arch the back. Hands back to the heart. Pretend you're the observer, the witness, not the doer. Arch back as you see fit. Fold the body down onto your legs. Close the gap between your body and your legs. Last foot back, sink down to the seat. Into the plank. Down we go. Ashtanga Namaskara. Glide right forward to the cobra. Shoulders back. Adho Mukha Sukhanasana. Lift the seat up and back. Sink the heart towards the ground. Then the left foot steps forward. Seats nice and low. Feet together. Balance the legs. A gesture of humility. Come all the way to the standing. Reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. And again, raise your arms up. A little bit of a different variation this time. Pull the body down onto your legs. Bend your knees. Chest on your thigh. Join the hands behind the back. Pull the hands back. Telescope the chest forward. And use going to push the legs back. As much as you can, just straight line so the seat comes over the heels. The chest is right by the knees. Your armpits are close, uh, just on either side of the knees as well. So you can pull your hands further over your head towards uh, in front of your head. Lift the seat up, same line as the heels. Then bring hands down, right foot back. Lower the knee down, sink down through the seat. Inhale, come up, rise up to the seat. The trunk, exhale, sink down the seat, lean back, circle the arms down. Inhale, come up, tuck the tail, exhale, elongate as you bring the arms down. Keep the spine long. Inhale, come up, lean back away from the leg. Now keep the seat low. Inhale, sweep the arms up again, pull the torso further by the hips, join the hands together if you can, Kali Mudra, into crescent moon, pulling shoulders back and gaze up. Fingertips, index fingers together, if you can. If it's too much, you can keep your hands apart. And then circle the arms down the rest of the way. Plant your hands down. You can either come into plank position, or if you feel you can, raise the left leg all the way up. Ekapada Adamukasanasana. Come forward, shoulders over the fingertips. If you've got your leg up, keep it up. And glue the elbows to the sides of the body. Bring your chest down between your hands first. If you need to, you can bring your knee down at the same time the chest is coming down. Otherwise, you do knees chest forward to the ground as we did before. Ashtanga Namaskara. Into Cobra. Roll all the way back into Downward Facing Dog. Now bring the right leg up. Extend the leg all the way up to the sky. Look towards the hands. Bring the knee in towards the body. Bring the shoulders over the fingertips so you can land the foot very softly between your hands. Lower the knee down, sink down to the seat. Raise your arms up again. Lift the seat. Exhale, sink down. Allow the arms to circle down. Inhale, come up. Use your arms to pull the torso further, belly hips. Imagine your arms have the ability to pull everything up and out. And rise up again. And sink down. Open yourself up to divine grace. Keep your seat low this time. Raise your arms up. Join the hands together if you can. Kali Mudra. And see if you can pull the arms up over your head and back a little bit behind the head. Maybe the arms come behind the ears. Press the shoulders back. And from here, you lead with the heart. Bring your hands back down and bring your left foot in to meet the right. Chest again on the thighs. And then from here, Uttanasana, bow humbly. All the movements, tap into the consciousness of the movements. Humbleness, in this case. And getting ready to stand up. Straight and tall, raise your arms up. Arch back, open yourself up to divine grace, surrendering to the highest self. Bring the hands back to the heart. And we'll do another one like that. 
raise your arms up, pull the torso up and hips, engage the buttocks to allow yourself to have more support as you go into back bend. Oops, <laughs> I didn't do that one very well. So pad down to the feet and then come forward and down into Uttanasana. Bend your knees again, chest on your thighs and pull the hands over the head. Forehead to the shins if your legs are straight. And then release the hands. Last foot back, lower the knee down, stick down to the seat. Inhale, come up right. Exhale, turn to the right. So your movements reflect the intention of open yourself up to all possibilities, all ex perspectives, all experiences. Circle down. Turn forward again, raise your arms up. Keep your seat low again, copy asana, pull your arms back. Elongate from the toes all the way to the fingertips. And then from here, leave the heart come back up. Plant your hands, push into your hands either high plank or if you can, bring the seat up and back and raise the right leg up. Ekapada Adamukha Sadhanasana. Come forward, shoulders over the fingertips. Again, cool the elbows to the side body, control your descent. Push into reach your toes as you descend. If you need to, bring your knee down at the same time. Go ahead or Ashtanga Namaskar, knees, chest, forehead down as a modification. Up into the cobra. Back into Anamukha Sadhanasana. Keep moving according to your condition. Left leg up. Remember, don't go to a place of distress or pain or suffering. Think about retransmitting. Bring your knee in towards the body, shoulders over the fingertips, and let it flip really softly to your hands. Lower the knee down, sit down to the seat. Inhale, come up. Right. Exhale, turn to your left. All the movements done gracefully. No jerky movements, no abrupt, hard movements, no loud noises, nothing to jar the witness or agitate the witness. Turn forward, raise your arms over the head, copy asana again. Pull your arms up and then sink the shoulders down, allow the arms to go back. Allow the head to go back if you feel comfortable to do. And circle the arms down the rest of the way and bring the head forward. Your hands on your side, left foot, and bring your right foot beside your left chest on your thighs. Uttanasana. Push your body into your legs, chest going beyond the knees, the forehead to the shins. If your legs are straight. Bow to the legs here. And then from here, come all the way back up. Arch back. Hands back to the heart. Imagine this as a divine dance of devotion. Raise your arms up, hips forward. Go forward and down into Uttanasana. So from here, plant the hands, push into your hands, bend your elbows and jump or walk back into Chaturanga, hovering above the ground this time. Or if you need to, again, you just stay in your cobra, you come up into, onto your belly and then you come up into cobra. If you can, however, swing through, try to keep your hips and knees away from the ground and imagine head hinge at the top of the thighs, bend the body back. Make like a dog howling at the moon. And try to pull the body foot in front of the hips, the chest forward, the, shoulder, the neck out of the shoulders, so you don't jam up the neck or the lower back. Tuck the chin in, press into your hands hard, so you're pushing right down into the ground, downward facing dog. Here, just take a moment to just bounce to the chest, Try to get your shoulders to come down, your arms to lengthen without bending your arms. Be very flexible, maybe your nose, your forehead, your nose, maybe your chin comes down. You're pushing the floor away from you. Now from here, lift the heels, bend the knees with the two hands, and then bring your feet forward, hopping or walking. Push the body against the legs, Uttanasana, and the head comes down. Come right to stand, reach up and back, hips forward, hands back to the heart. Again, raise your arms up, reach up high. Remember, reflect divine love, unconditional love towards all in your form, in, as you imitate them. Uttanasana, lift the head and chest, press out your hands, back again softly. Bend your elbows as you're coming back so you don't land with a big, heavy landing, a big jarring movement into upward facing dog now tuck the chin in 
round your back and move right back into downward facing dog melt the heart come forward again immediately just continuous motion of rounding the back and the transition and then arching your back into upward or downward facing dog that's the chin come all the way back and sink the heart melt in every sense of the word one more time, roll over your toes, round your back. You feel so you're pushing your heart right between your shoulder blades. Then forward, right, feel it burst right out of the rib cage. Back the other way, tuck the chin, round your back. Make way back into downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, sink the heart again. Bring the belly towards your thighs. Make like a dog, loyal to its master. Imit imitate the dog, stretching its back. Be physically, mentally, and emotionally. And see the divine qualities of God in all the forms. Now lift the heels, bend the knees, look to the hands, hold the breath, and bring your feet forward. And then exhale. Push the belly into your thighs. Forehead comes to shins again if your legs are straight. Come right up to stand, reach up and back. Bring the hands back to the heart. Take pause here for a moment. From the heart, inhale up to the space between the eyebrows. Exhale back down to the heart. We may establish some divine love towards all beings everywhere. And release every posture and offering. Everything we do, this eventually extends to beyond the mat in everything we do. Standing on the left foot first, take the right heel if you can from the inside. You, if you're having trouble bounce, you can stand right against the wall. And then raise the arms and the legs at the same time. You try to get your toes and the fingers on the same line. So it might look more like a T with your fingers to height to the shoulders and the foot to height to the shoulders, or maybe you can look like a little uh, more like a letter Y if you're more flexible. And then lift the chest, look up, be magnificent, poised, graceful like a dancer. Now we have a few options here, we're very flexible. You can see if you can bring your foot in and take hold of the foot from the outside, uh, not from the front, and then take the outside of the foot and see if you can bring your leg right up by your shoulder. And then you can push the left arm against the leg and come into this variation. If you're less flexible, you can just take your knee. And if you can't get your leg straight, just do your best. Just press your hand underneath your knee, just uh, just on the upper portion of the leg and just straighten your leg as much as you can. Good. Then from here, break the pose. Try not to allow the foot to come down heavily, down quietly. Try it on the other side now. Plant down through the right foot. Take hold of the left heel. It helps to bring your focus to a point, maybe about three feet in front of you on the ground. Again, take whatever position you like with your modification, holding underneath the knee, or try to come a little bit higher with the foot close to the shoulder. If you want to try the other pose where you're taking hold of the foot from the outside, you can go into that one. So just try to use your creativity to find you way into beautiful form, stability at your potential. Keep redefining your edge. Getting ready to come out of the pose softly. All right, so now we'll do another sequence here, starting off at the back end of the mat. Warrior three. Raise your arms up, hands in Kali Mudra. Bring your left foot forward and hinge at the hips. Bring your body level to the ground. Bend your left knee and bring your right leg up. If it's too much, if you have control bounce, you can bring your index fingers to the ground first and then up, either in front or to the side like an airplane. Hips level to the ground. Now you can stay here, this is at your, at your edge already. Or lean forward, bend your soft, your left side move a little bit. Bring your belly onto your thigh and then see if you can pull your right leg up higher. Be like an eagle. 
with the great wingspan, soar like you're soaring through the air. If you can, you can join your hands together, top of the tree, very similar. Open up the palms, your hands are joined together. Raise the right leg up higher. Higher than the head if you can. Now from here, release the hands, drop the left hand down, front the left foot. Thumb roughly about one foot in front of the little toe. Thumb and, and then turn to the right. Avatandrasana. Raise the right arm up. If you need to, you can take a block. If you're very hunched down, you can't find uh, the shape easily, you can come onto your knee and do it from here. Okay, so this is always an option. Use your, um, use your uh, imagination again to find your knees of poses. If you want to go further, bend the knee, take hold of the foot. You can do this if you're on your shin or on your foot. Push the foot away from your, from your the rest of your body. Here, if you want to go even further to challenge your balance, roll the right side in, look forward. You can see if you take your left hand to your heart, or maybe you can take your hand right to the foot, push into the foot. Release, bring left hand back down if you have, if you let go, and then bring the left knee down and press back up. Try it on the other side now. Right, uh, looks like you're putting your hands together first. Right foot forward and hinge forward. Bend at the waist, bend your right knee, and then take your left leg up. Straight line like you're lying on the table. The foot sometimes goes higher than you think, or sometimes if you're hunched down, the foot will not come up high. So just try to imagine what you look like in your pose. Imagine in your mind, see how the body feels. You can take your variations if you need to, or your modifications of your arms up to the side or to the ground if you need to. And then so you can raise your leg a little bit higher if you want to come into a gliding eagle. Lift the chest. Bring your left foot up higher. Or top of the tree. Interlace your fingers, open up the palms. Pull hands over the head, keep diving your head towards the ground. Left foot comes up higher. Release the hands, right hand comes down, front to the right foot, thumb lines the little toe. Turn to your left, raise the left leg up higher, point the toe, left arm comes up. Try to get your hips and shoulders to stack right on top of one another. Again, lower down on the right knee if this is too much. If you can't get your hand to the ground, for instance, so you can come down like this. If you're finding that you're hunching down just to uh, try to get your hand to the ground, just come down onto your knee. And from here, you can take hold of the foot, bend the knee, and pull the foot. You can still do lots of things from this pose. No judgment, no concern as to what you are able to do or not do. Just do your best. It's the effort that counts. And if you want, you can take hold of the foot, roll the thigh, left thigh in, push the foot away, your head is facing forward, and you can take the right hand to the heart. Keep your right hip over the right heel. If you have the balance, so you can take both hands to the foot. You have to roll the left thigh in a little bit more. Now pull the foot towards the seat, right hand comes down, left foot comes back down, and press back up. Good. Now, come to the middle of the mat, facing that long edge of the mat, fingertips together at the height of the shoulders, jump your feet apart. When you go to your left, if you're not facing the camera, you can just jump 180 degrees. So now we're going to go to the left, Vira Badrasana 2. Stay down to the seat, try to get your knee over the toes if you have the flexibility to do so. Otherwise, you stay higher, but try not to make sure your knee's not popping in. It's right over the foot. From here, 
is Tripartial Konasana. You can take your forearm to your left thigh and reach the right arm over the head, pull the right arm back, right shoulder back, turn your chest up. If you have the flexibility, you can bring your hand down to the inside of your foot. Reach the arm over the head, so make sure the hip is not jutting up. Flatten up the hip, press the hip down. Straight line from the foot all the way to the hand. Now if you know the variations, you can go ahead, you can take the right arm behind the back and bring your hand to the inside the thigh. A half bind or a full bind. Your shoulder comes down, keep your shoulder against the knee. Your left arm comes underneath the left arm, left leg, and join your hands together beside the seat. So sometimes it ends up looking like this. You're trying to get your hands over the seat. This is too much. So your left hand just comes beside your left side of the seat. That makes it easier to take the bind. Now bring the hands back down. Look forward and then slide your right toes out a little bit further back. Roll to the right so you can get the right forearm down. Roll to your left so you can get the left, left forearm down. Lizard, make sure your knee's not falling away from your shoulder. If it does, move your foot out a little bit more. Knees in line with your foot. And then feel like you're very heavy in your hips. The hips are anchoring you down, and when the hips are heavy and down, maybe your belly will come down, followed by the chest. If you're very low, you can bring your left arm to the outside of the foot. Your left shoulder comes beside your foot. If you're flat on the ground, you can take a bind. The left arm comes over the foot, underneath the knee from the outside, over your back. And you just hold the uh, right wrist with your left hand. Again, according to condition. Make like a lizard just spin yourself on a walk. From here, make your way back up. If you're on the arms, come back onto your hands. Keep your seat very low, right close to the front heel. From here, you can take your left hand to your knee, push into your knee, straighten your arm, push, activate to the knee. Lean away from the leg, curve the spine, right hand slides towards the foot. You can stay here. You can take the left arm up, reach over the head. If you're comfortable, you can take your right foot up. Try to take the foot in your hand. If you pull it close enough, bring it on the right side of the body, and then lean towards the foot, your shoulder comes towards the foot, your fingertips are right by the head. Left hand, when it comes up, bend the hand elbow, and then your hands will find one another more easily. Then if you want, you can push your foot away from your shoulders so you soften the elbow joint, no sharp folds. Think of the swan's neck. Make your arms look long and graceful. The trick is to see your, keep your seat low so you don't lose your balance. And then bring your foot back towards your shoulder. Release the foot gently. Turn forward. Press into your fingertips. Bring your seat back. And then come more upright. Left foot comes underneath the left knee. Bend the toes under our right foot. The legs are like a box. Right arm up, angle the toe and knee towards the right. The arm sits on the outside of the leg. The armpit is just against the knee. Left hand and right hand, push the left hand down to the right. As you push down, the, center, the belly rises up over the thigh. The center of the chest comes to your thumbs. And keep pushing your belly, your, your chest towards your thumbs. As you push against the outside of the knee, and turn your chest up. Pull the left hip back, pull the head forward. As you inhale, exhale, turn a little bit more. Those who want to take the bind, full first of all modification if you need to, you come stay up higher. Hands, right hand to the outside of the knee, left hand on the seat, and just turn. Keep your body upright. If you want to go deeper into the bind, you move your seats back so you create more space between your knee and your seat. You take your left hand to your elbow, and then you just try to thread your arm underneath. So your elbow has to be in the space below the knee. Left arm goes over the back. Lock the fingers together or hold the right left wrist with your right hand. You can stay here or bend the toes under, take a half breath in, 
take the knee up off the ground. Keep pulling on the left arm. Try to get your chest stitching right up like you're lying flat on your back. Okay, those you want to try a balance pose, a challenge here. Bring the right foot in, bring the left side, hip over the left heel. Keep your head down, hold your breath, and see if you can take the right leg up. If you don't have a bind, you can just keep your right hand in front of your right foot on the inside a little bit, thumb line the big toe, a little bit to the inside, raise your right leg up, and see so if you can turn your chest to your left, and bring the left arm up. So this is another uh, a little bit more accessible one if you like to try it. Bring the foot back down. From here, step your left foot back, or come into plank, and then just step your left foot back. Cross, uh, your ankles will cross as you come to your left for Vasisthasana. Make sure you don't drop into your shoulder, don't lose your neck. Keep your left arm fully extend your right hands in front of the right shoulder a little bit. Push your hips forward like you're being blown by the wind from behind, like a kite. Come back, plank, come, and then spin to the other side. Left hand can move more toward in front of the nose. You, our ankles can cross, right? Our right leg, ankle in front of the other one, or you can stack your feet if you like. Push your hips up away from the ground. Then come back to high plank. From here, step the right foot between the hands. And from here, bring your hands back between your feet, come all the way up. Now go to the right. Turn again, 180 degrees if you need to. Come into warrior two. Sink down to the seat, exude the confidence in the war and the determination and the courage of the warrior. Stay strong through the pose, show up in the pose. Be strong and always engaged. Now from here, Pashukanasana, you can start here and stay here with the left forearm, uh, left arm over the head, the right forearm resting on your left, your right thigh, pull to the left shoulder back, look up, to the palm above you. If you have the ability to take your hand to the ground, go ahead, your shoulder is pushing against the knee. Make sure you don't lose contact in the back of the shoulder and the knee. And then you can take other variations from here. Take a half bind if you like, slip your left hand onto your thigh, underneath your right arm, or take a full bind. And move your shoulder down a little bit so the right arm comes completely underneath the leg. And then you take the bind beside your right side of the seat. Push your body against the leg. Break the pose wherever you are. Bring the left hand down, turn forward. From here, scoot your left foot back, flatten out your knee, uh, bring your knee to the ground, flatten out your toes, roll to your left all the way. See if you can get, well, so that you can get your left hip down and your left forearm down, roll to the right and see if the right forearm comes down. If the forearm still come down, just stay on your hands and keep telescoping your chest forward. More flexible, of course. Keep on trying to come down lower and lower. If you feel like you have a big weight on the top of your seat, and spreading all along the body, maybe that in that that image will help you to go deeper into the pose and come down. Now surrender to the pose. Be like a lizard, sun yourself on a warmer. Take other variations if you want them. Go to a place where you're still coming to your edge, you're still exploring your potential, but always in a mindful way, not in a way that brings about negativity. 
the form of distress or anxiety or pain. Now, take the pole, come back on your hands, lift back up, just part way. So we can sink your seat right down towards your front heel. Right hand to the right thigh, push into your knee, straighten your arm, and lean away from the leg, allow the right hand to slide. Push into the right hand with your right thigh, allow your left hand to slide down towards the foot behind you. Make sure you're not crunching up the underside of the body, the left side. You can stay here, you can take the right arm up, stretch, or perhaps if you can, bring your left foot up. Your knees a little bit in front, a little offset from the foot, a little bit to the front a little bit. So the knee comes up and then foot comes to the shoulder. You can hold on to the foot or if you can submit to crook of the arm, lean towards the foot so the fingers come right up towards the ear, bend the right hand down and the fingers will find one another. And then lengthen your arms. Keep your seat low again so you don't lose your balance. Now release, bring the foot close to the shoulder. Bring the left hand down, bring the left foot down. Then from here, turn forward. Rise up taller. The right foot comes in a little bit closer underneath the back of the left, the right knee. Left arm up. Parivita Pashukanasana. If you need to modify, you stay upright like so. Otherwise, I'll do it in this direction this time. Ankle the toe and the knee towards the left. Back of the arm. Armpit sitting against the outside of the knee. Right hand pushes down to your left and really push down hard so that your hands come down to the level of the center of the chest. And you're always trying to push the chest towards the thumbs and roll the right shoulder all the way back. Take the body if you like. Move here. This way it's important to have your armpit sitting on the outside of the leg. So your elbow will come down underneath the leg. Move the elbow in, move the seat back. And use the right hand to guide the hand underneath. So you have more space to allow the arm to thread underneath. Right arm goes over the back, take lock the fingers together or hold the right wrist. Push the right shoulder all the way back. Take your knee up off the ground if you like. Press back through the heel, extend through the crown. Bring that left hand down a little bit from the shoulder. From here, spin on your left foot. So hopefully you can see, pull the foot in a little bit so you can get your base of the big toe flat on the ground. Then from here, you can again come into side plank with your right shoulder, uh, right foot in front of the left. If you're doing that one, you might want to move your hand a little bit further away so that you don't drop into your shoulder. Otherwise, you try to keep your hips right up as high as you can, slide your right toes around, push into your toes and spin on the foot. The left foot is at 45 degrees, the, big, the base of the big toe is down. You see how high my hips are, like you're doing Urvedanirasana. You have the big toe grounded, you can just, and your left hand grounded, you can see if you can raise your right leg up. You have no weight on that right foot, it's all on the left foot and your left hand. You take hold of the knee, if you have the reach, you take hold of the foot. Keep pushing your base of the big toe down. Keep strong through the leg, muscles, left arm. And from here, release, bring the toes back down. Spin on the left heel of the palm, come back to down facing dog. And do it on the other side now. Modification for this is just keep your left knee on the ground. Okay, and then so you can try it on the other side now. Come back into downward facing dog, get your hips high. Right hand moves a little bit more to the left. Spin towards the left. And push your hips forward. And from here, move your right foot in a little bit so that you can get the base of the flat on the ground. Turn the foot at 45 degrees. And keep spinning so your chest and hips are facing up. 
Keep your right arm extended, make sure you don't drop into the shoulder. And from here, you can see if you take your left knee up. One, two, and then catch the knee. Maybe take hold of the foot. Push your hips way up. Arm fully extended, the right arm. And then release back into downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. And bring your right foot between the hands, spin on your feet, face the long edge of the mat and come all the way up. Let's do easy chakrasana. Bring your feet in so that your toes are beyond the edge of the mat. Bend your knees so your knees come over your toes, hands to the seat and push your hips forward. Keep bending your knees so that your, um, your, so that your body can come down lower. Push your hands in the seat, pull down at the same time. If you feel comfortable, slide one hand at a time, just below the knee. Grip just below the knees and then roll the thighs out with roll the shins at the same time. Then from here, you can see if you can push, keep pushing into your legs, heels, your palms, just underneath the knees, and push your hips further forward and up so that you can let it straighten your legs. But you keep on rolling the thighs out, you can roll the chins inwards. More flexible, you can walk your hands down further, maybe to the feet, maybe you can step on your heels, uh, step on your fingers with your heels. Good, now from here, coming back up, still have your hands around the legs somewhere, walk them up one at a time, walk the back of the backs of the leg, push into seat, pull down, and come up. So turn your feet so they're parallel now. And maybe the heels can go a little bit even further out. Arms up to the side, hinge forward. Pasari to Palatanasana. Take your hands through the ankles. You can even step on your fingers with your edges of your feet. Extend to the crown, exhale, pull the head right in between your feet. Lift the shoulders, push your chest towards um, forward as so you're trying to get the chest behind the legs. Good, now here, you can stay here in this version, in this inversion. Or if you want, you can come up in the headstands, place your hands, fingertips behind the heels, and you can come up. If you want to go, if you want to try something else, some of our bounds can even come onto your forearms. It takes a little bit more core. So you bring your elbows underneath the shoulders, you tip forward, and you try to bring your legs up, circle them up. Now we can just bring your head down to the ground, keep your head on the ground, tripod. So whatever is good for you. Get ready to come down, so engage your legs. As you straddle your legs down, especially when your feet come close to your, the ground. You can really engage your core so that you can land your feet in the same place as they started. And then arms up to the side, come all the way back up. Move your heels in a little bit, adjust your feet. One more easy to kasana. Hands start on your seat, bend your knees. Breathing four, uh, bring your hips way forward, and then allow your body to go back. You can take your hands again onto your knees, backs behind your knees. If you're very flexible, your head is close to the ground, you can see the floor easily. You can bring one arm over the head, and bring your hands to the ground, and then the other hand comes to the ground. Urva Danirasana. Move again according to conditions. These are just options for those who are familiar with the practice, you can go ahead. Come back from Urva Danilasana, one hand at a time, come on to your fingertips, bring one hand to the back of the knee, and then once you have that anchored hand anchored in place, your other hand comes. Your hips are forward over your knees to make yourself steady, and then you walk your way back up. Everybody can do this now, come all the way back up. 
arms up to the side, jump your feet together, the arms by sides of body, be tall like a mountain, unshakable or movable in your devotion to the practice. Once again, take a deep breath in from the heart up to the space to the eyebrows. Exhale back down to the heart, remain established in devotion towards all beings. Now from here, we're gonna come down into the knees. If, now it's time for the inversions here, headstand. If you know how to get into headstand, please go ahead, you don't have to wait. Come up, bring your attention to the space in the eyebrows. Once your body is steady, leave the body alone and just meditate upon the space in the eyebrows. Try to keep your attention there. Okay, you can do a lotus as well if you want while you're up there. Now for all others, if you're trying to find your way into pose, don't know how to get into it, a few options here. Come into your seat on your heels, bring your forehead down. From here, if you want to do stay ba uh, more basic, you just lift your seat up. Try to have your hips over your knees. And you can just stay here. If you find too much pressure on the back of the neck, you can just move your head forward a little bit so you're more on the top of the head. If you want to go further, you can bring your fingertips down the ground beside your knees, just behind the back of the knees. Walk your hands out a little bit further. So it's important to have your hands a little bit further away from you, not beside your head. Your fingers facing away, your palms facing towards you. Press into your finger stand and lift your seat. Bring your elbows in a little bit, and from here you can just lift your heels and push the underneath the knees against your elbows. You can stay like this, or Press into your fingertips, hold your breath, and see if you can get even just one, the toes of one foot up off the ground. Just pull your toes away from the ground. And she might be able to bring your feet up higher than the elbows and move your knees in a little bit closer to your shoulders. Finger stand helps you, has lots of power, will keep you all, keep you in balance. If there's too much pressure for your head, those human headstands still stay. You can play around variations if you know any advanced practitioners. Otherwise, other option, take hold of your opposite elbows, make sure you can hold them easily. And then don't move your elbows, move your hands in front, interlace your fingers and place, move your head forward in between your hands. And then lift your seat, walk your feet towards your elbows. You can just either pulse up and down here, lift the heels and bring them back down. Try and get the sense of the weight coming over your shoulders. The tip coming over the shoulders. If you feel comfortable, bring one leg up and back behind you. Allow the foot to hang heavily towards the ground behind you. Flex the foot again. And from here, hold your breath. Press into forearms. Press the heels of the palms against the head. And again, bend your toes away from the ground. Just pull your foot, your toes away from the ground. That's all you have to do. It will help you. Benji, if you keep pushing through the back of the foot, you find the confidence to do this. You can imagine you have your feet at the same height as the hips. Keep your toes bent to keep your leg muscles, your core muscles engaged, your root muscles working and active. And then come back down softly from wherever you're at. Come into child's pose. Breathe in, breathe out, soften. And then roll up. Actually, bring your arms forward and glide into your cobra. Adamuka Sukhanasana, lift the seat up and back. And now look to the hands, lift the heels, bend the knees. Let's bring forward to your hands into Utkatasana, bring your arms up, arms up, scoop your, uh, scoop out your lower back, look up between your hands, if you want to lift your shoulders, you can interlace your fingers, press the palms up, hold the arms alongside the ears or behind the ears a little bit, sharp uh, lines in your body like a thunderbolt. If you want to challenge yourself, lift the 
heels. Press into the your toes. Come down. Your seat on the heels. Oops. <laughs> Great. Let's try that again. Push into the base of the toes. Forward, bring the heels down, tuck the chin in, reach the hands, roll right back onto your back, and your feet behind your head. Halasana. Now join your hands together behind the back. Try to move them so much so that the elbows come close together. So if you're looking from the front, you can't see your arms anymore. Place your hands on your back, heels your palms roughly in the mid back. You can, if, it's, if you need to stay, with your knees close to your forehead, you can do this, of course. If you want, you can come one or both legs up at a time into shoulder stance. Try to have your toes in line with your chin, point your toes, engage your legs. Now, if you have a lotus, you may go into your lotus. Keep one hand on the back if you need to, not to move and Use your other hand to move if you want to place. If you're wearing top of your shoulders, you can also take your hands to your thighs. This is with or without the lotus, you can do this. Push your hips forward. If you have a lotus, try to get your hips, your knees higher than your hips. Follow the intention of the space between your eyebrows now. Fix your attention on Prakuti, the seat of divine perception. If you have a lotus, you can bring your legs down into Pindasana, bring your thighs against your body. If you're not going to take a bind, Wrap your arms around the outside of the legs, join your hands underneath the feet, pull your thigh again, pull your body. If you don't have a lotus, just do cloud pose, bring your feet down behind your head, walking as far away from your head as possible. If your feet don't come down, keep your hands on the back, otherwise, you can also drop your knees down, still look at the side of the head, your thighs against your chest, knees to the shoulders. Now withdraw from the senses. Close the ears, close your eyes. Hands onto the back again. If you can, come into bridge pose. So if your hands on the back, keep one foot close, uh, just where it is, as you bring the other leg forward and down. Keep your seat pressing with your hands so you land your foot quietly, softly, not the heavy landing, and so the other leg comes flying down after you. Control it so the feet come down softly, like a feather. Now, from here, couch pose. I'll, I'll just talk you through couch pose, and for modification, you do bench, uh, bridge, uh, fish pose. So you bring heels together, keep your heels up, walk forward on your shoulders and your elbows. So you slither forward like you're slithering on your back. Take hold of the ankles, and once you have the ankles, dig the elbows down, tuck the chin in, and lift your back and your head up off the ground. Now tilt forward, hold the ankles so that your knees can come down. Your seat stays on your heels, and then just allow your head to go back, rest the top hand on the ground. You may keep holding on to your ankles if you need that support, or take all your opposite elbows over, uh, over your head. Press your forearms against your forehead against your forearms. This is couch pose. You can stay here. If you're doing bridge, uh, fish pose, maybe uh, just move your hands under the seat. Extend your legs and push into your arms, your lower arms. Lift the chest and bring the top head down. So, whichever variation you're doing. Now,
Now, last streak of breath, breathe very fast, nose to distance from God. Relax. Come back onto your back. Breathe in. arms over the head, reach, and come to seated position. If you need to roll onto your side, that's all good to come up to seated position and reach where you can. Start off with Tadasana, star pose. You bring the soles of the feet together, long base. Your feet are about your heels or roughly a little bit more in a foot, um, a, maybe about a foot and a third foot and a half away from your root. Allow the knees to fall outwards, and then come forward, interlace your fingers underneath the feet, press the index fingers, if found a couple of the toes. Let a few fingers just come around the toes as well. Inhale, extend the head forward, and then bring the forehead down onto your feet if you can. Keep your chin on the heels. Even if you can't get your head down to your feet, just concentrate your space on your, um, just Keep on trying to let your head to come down more. If you want to have a block between your feet and rest your block, your head on the block, you can do this. All the attention to the base of the spine. On the inhale, on the base of the spine, the inhale up, base of the spine to the crown. Exhale back down to the base of the spine. a little bit further away from one another and slide your hands underneath your legs. Your forearms underneath the shins, take hold the edge of the feet and pull the head down towards the ground. If this is very easy for you, you can do Kurmasana. Bring your knees up more towards your shoulders and then bring your hands beside your body, the fingers facing back. Your arms, your hands are traveling behind your feet and then you're pushing your heels forward, trying to get your legs down onto your arms, just close to the shoulders. The weight of the legs will eventually bring your body down further and further. Eventually your belly comes down, the chest, chin. If your elbows are free, join your hands over your back. Taurus is a very long breath cycle, that's why they live so long. Their breaths are very long. So no other factors, if all it has to do is breathe, we live a very long time because we all have a finite a number of breaths that we have in a lifetime. We just want to prolong that breath. arms. I'll demonstrate this one first. I'll have a, a way of getting into it if this is not accessible. So lean back, your legs over your arms close to shoulders. Really press the heels down. Um, and so you're squeezing the arms from the shoulders from behind and um, in front with the legs. Now lean forward, push into your hands, bring your head forward, and then hold your breath. Push firmly into the ground. Your seat comes up. So sometimes it's easier to bring one foot pressing into the toes the other one to start. Eventually, however, you can maybe keep your body level to the ground if you bring legs in front, Titi Basana. If this is not, if you can't get off the ground, you start with your seat up. You start on your feet from standing. And then bring your shoulders in behind your legs. Try as much as possible your shoulders just behind this in front of your knees. Drop your seat down, keep your head forward, your wrists and your elbows in the same line. Slide your feet forward, keep your body low to the ground, level to the ground. Push into the ground hard, hold the breath, and see if you can take your feet up. Again, you can just bring your toes together, arms squeezing the pose. 
no grupo de quizás. Now from here, if you like, you can jump back into Chaturang if you know that exit. Or you just walk your feet back, come out of the pose and lie on your belt. Forehead on the hands, breathe in, breathe out. Bring your hands into the shoulders, roll the shoulders back, anchor down through the legs, feet together. Come up into Cobra. If you need to modify, keep your forearms on the ground. If you even scooch forward so you're holding the edge of the front edge of the mat and tug on the mat. At the same time, you're pushing your chest forward away from the seat. Drop the shoulders down. Feel heavy through the forearms and the hips and the shoulders. Keep moving your chest forward. Your arms keep anchoring your body in place, but keep moving your chest in, uh, further forward. Eventually, you can take your elbows up off the ground. Bring your head back. Form the C-shape with your spine. Walk your hands a little bit closer, a little bit closer. Come up higher and higher. Always mindfully. More flexible. Come on to your fingertips. Bring them close. Bend your toes under, walk your hips forward so your hips come all to the front. The hands push into the arm, fingertips and bring your body up higher. Almost whole body, the whole trunk is off the ground from the thighs, the top of the thighs up, everything up off the ground. Open up your legs if you like, and from here bend your knees, try to bring your toes to your head, point your toes. Keep pushing your fingertips, keep pulling the body up. Eventually, maybe the head will and the feet will meet. If they don't, don't worry about it, just keep trying. Once your feet touch the head, you can just take your hands flat on the ground again. Come out of the pose. Come down. Control it so you don't come crashing down. Breathe in. Now, bow pose, or you can repeat cobra. Bend your legs up, tickle the ankles, flex your feet, lift the chest, push your heels away from your body, your shoulders. You can keep your thighs on the ground, keep pulling, you can bring your legs up. If you have, need a strap, you can use to take a strap, wrap it around the feet, um, and then just hold on to the strap and come up. Okay, so. Do this pose. You can do other poses if you like, other variations. If you know how to do the, a full pose, go ahead. Bend the toes under one foot and then take hold of the thumb to the base of the toes um, and, and to the ball of the foot and the other foot goes around the other side of the foot. Lift the foot up as high as you can. So lay your elbow as high as the shoulder and then you can spin the elbow forward and then you can do the other leg. Once you have one foot, you can take the foot the same way. It will be easy to come to the pose. Make sure you have good shoulder mobility. Don't torque your shoulders. Don't hurt your shoulders. Move mindfully, know your limitations. So this is how you get this is the full pose if you want to try that one. If you know the, if you know the transition. Stay a little bit longer. None of these are accessible. You can roll onto your side and do the bow from the side. So you take the top, the roll onto your one side and take over the top foot, the foot that's higher away from the ground, and then the other foot comes with your hand. And then push your feet down away from your shoulders like you're standing in camel pose. Maybe you can Pull heels in, push off the right, the, the bottom shoulder, come to the front, uh, come onto your belly, roll onto the other side. So this is a modification again. Uh, it's too much to do on your belly. And then from here, come out of the pose. 
Slide on the hands, breathe in, breathe out. Heads over the shoulders, come back to seated position. Knees together, feet together, right hand behind the back, just stand so the back left arm up. And press your forearm against the outside of the right leg. Inhale, push the lower back up and in. Push your knee into the shoulder, into the elbow, and the elbow into the knee. Make sure your leg, left knee doesn't drop away from the other knee. Keep them together. Bill, if you want to take a bind, get the tip of the knees to your right a little bit. Bring your arm down and then spread your arm underneath. And push back with your shoulder into the knees and your hands join beside your hip. So if it's a little bit of a stretch, you might need a strap. You're first doing this. Use a strap if you need to. Push the lower back up and in. Release, go to the other side. Left hand down the side of the back, right arm up. Go to the other side of the left leg. Push against the knee and the, um, with the elbow and vice versa. Turn your chest all the way to your left. Again, if you want to take a bind, go ahead. Drop the knees a little bit towards the left. Bring your hand round, try to hold right hip with your hand, snake your other hand around and take your hand or use a strap. Bring your body back upright, make sure you don't shrink down and slouch, keep your body, your back straight and long. Release, come onto your back. Ease your way down slowly. Lie down now. Allow your body to sink into the ground, feel very heavy. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, drop all the tension away from the body. Just allow the body to just sink down. Feel as though all the muscles just released completely. All of its strength, so the body, everything feels very heavy. Two more times, inhale. Imagine you're collecting all the tension in the body, all of the tightness, wherever you feel restriction. Exhale, just send it out. Imagine there's a big funnel right underneath you and you just send it right down the funnel and into the ground, away from your body. Inhale, gather up any negative emotions, any feelings or mental uh, experiences or anything. Exhale again, send them out of your body. Be rid of everything you don't want that prevents you from feeling content. And one with God. So on the next inhale, breathe in light and love. Breathe in courage, wisdom, all of these qualities that you're trying to cultivate. Imagine it streaming into the body like great beams of light, right into the skin. Exhale, just fill your whole being with that. Feel flooded with all that, all those positive effects, all the benefits of the practice. Inhale again, bring in even more of it. The best of the best universe, everything that you need. Exhale, just send it right, funnel it right to the spiritual heart located in the right side, in the right side of the physical heart in the center of the chest. Make an offering to God. And one more time, inhale. All the goodness, all the benefits, everything that you need, right into the spiritual heart. Hold it there as an offering for God. And as God is equally present in all beings, on the exhale, imagine 
Consinia to all beings everywhere. the act of sharing, you're exercising a form of compassion. Everything that we have is belongs to others. Keep in that mindset of benevolence and generosity. And then you attract good outcomes for yourself. best is when you don't expect it, when you don't cling to that expectation that from your good actions, thoughts and deeds, you will get those benefits. Just do it out of selfless service. Do it because it must be done so you can send it out to all beings everywhere. Shavasana, come back into your body, reacquaint yourself with the body and come back to see the position, prepare to sit in a way that is mindful, reverent and silent. We'll close with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, instill the peace within, send out to all beings everywhere. Om Shanti 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 Be receptive to the divine grace within Namaste Thank you so much for joining Much love and see you soon.